and we're back with machining more emblems and this time it's for a Z28 Camaro. The last one was the IROC Z Camaro emblems but this one's for a Z28 so that's basically what this whole thing is. I have some 3 16 thick material here. We're going to mill it down to somewhere around 0.15, 150 thousandths and that's the overall thickness. So we have a couple of these to machine and then we're good to go. First one up is this emblem right here, and this is about eight and a half inches from end to end, so it's pretty big. Using the brand new system. This is the last part, and then we're going to clean these things up and get them powder coated. That was a pretty intricate part there. I'm sure you guys saw this one coming. Stuck. I mean, I saw it coming after I sprayed it. I knew it was going to happen. I didn't think it was going to be too bad, but apparently it is, so the rest of them came off really easy. I just gave it a tap with a dead blow hammer and came right off. So what I should have done was I should have just sprayed all of them while they were on this metal rack right here and then put the whole metal rack in rather than put them on that piece of aluminum. So what we're going to do now is we're going to use the tape method one more time and put the pieces straight up and then just mill the top part of that powder coating off and that should leave a really nice finish on the top and it should really make the words and letters and numbers pop and basically i just went until that barely touched the top of the powder coat just to scrape it off basically and that's what we end up with now it missed a few spots right there and a little bit on this O. Take a little bit of sandpaper and just buff that out a little bit. This is like, it's gonna be like 400 grit sandpaper, so it's gonna, it's gonna put a nice sheen on it. And there it is, that turned out really nice. At least I think so. And now I have to do this four more times. So I quickly want to go over the programming I did for one of these parts. So here's my part. Basically I just take the shear hog and profile out around it. At 8,000 RPM I'm only stepping over 80 thousandths. So not very much but because it's glued on with super glue and masking tape that's why I went so conservative. And then I did a regular adaptive toolpath. This is a 3D adaptive so it's getting all of the part 
and I just basically selected the entire thing. There's no stock selection, there's no boundary, it just went full board to machine the whole thing, what all it could get with the quarter inch end mill. And then I went to my eighth inch end mill and just contoured out around the entire profile. With that eighth inch end mill, I went to another 3D adaptive, this time with rest machining on. If you happen to be unfamiliar with rest machining, 3D toolpaths can look at previous toolpaths from here from previous operations and you can see how much material is left so with that it, this eighth inch end mill can see what material is left and it goes after all it can get with that eighth inch end mill and then I did another 3D adaptive toolpath this time with a one millimeter end mill and did the same thing here with the rest machining I'm going after all it can get with this one millimeter end mill with the remaining stock that it sees that's left from the previous operations and with this tiny one millimeter end mill I'm going Given all the RPMs I have, 10,000 RPM, 6 inches a minute, I might be able to bump that up a little bit, but I got nervous. And I'm only feeding it at 8 thousandths width of cut. So that's very, very small amount. I don't want to risk breaking this thing because that would be a huge pain. So that operation took about 50 minutes as you can see right there. And you see this little warning? That's just a warning. No big deal. I don't really understand what this is. It worked out fine, but I'm not sure what's going on there. And then I have these two 2D chamfers, and I have my quarter inch 90 degree spot drill that I still do all my chamfering with. I probably should get a chamfer mill, but that's okay. So the chamfers on these bigger letters up here and numbers, they are a little bit bigger, the chamfers are. That's why I have these two chamfers over here. And this chamfer is six thousandths. This one is only four thousandths. So not a huge difference there but it made a big difference in the end. I used that, almost that same exact setup for each individual part that I ran. So almost exactly the same for every single part. And there you can see with everything, after everything is milled out, I can remove the part and that's what we come up with. That's it for the CAD. Just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a preview of how I program these parts. So these were a pretty interesting project because I've never really done anything like this before. I machined it, then powder coated it, then faced it off again. And I was a little bit afraid that it might mess up the powder coat after machining the top part again after I had powder coated it. I thought it might chip it a little bit, but the Superfly did a pretty good job and it, it cut right through that very well. Although it took a while to complete just because the cycle times with the smaller tools are just, it's just a really long time and then powder coating it didn't take that long but then I don't know setting it back up with the Superfly to face off the top it just was a little bit of a pain almost but we got it done and it looks good so I'm good with that so I think that's it for now so thanks for watching when the telephone connection between these two terminals is made the newest form of electronic journalism lights up Mr. Howell